you know, we are in such a season where we are seeing so much influence and demonic forces and hatred and violence just really expressing itself in every area. And we're really seeing it in our government especially. But you know, God says judgment's in the house of God. And in that, there's a place and position where we need to be in everything that we do, and that is right before God. It's an area to where we need to be denying ourselves, constantly picking up the cross and following and fighting. You know, so many times we lose sight where we came from. And then we lose gratitude. Amen. You know, when you begin to look at all the things that we have done and where we have come from, and that God has been there for us every time, even when we blew it. Amen. Guilty. And he said, not guilty. Because he paid the price for us and everything. You know, in this world of humanity, there are areas that I want to talk about because it was put in my spirit a couple days ago and the Lord just really brought it to me about three stages of humanity. In the area where he's saying, my people need to come out of humanity and come into eternity. And there's so many bondages in the life of humanity. Human precepts, human understanding. You know, there's a difference between flesh, carnal, and spirit. And in this, there are three stages of humanity you know, in humanity, when you and I were born, there was infant and what we call toddler stage. And there's an adolescent stage. And then there's adulthood, where we mature. And in these three stages in humanity, there is a parallel to each and every one. Because you and I were born in the flesh. Amen? Amen? We were born in the flesh. That means we were offsprings of darkness. We were, li we were living in darkness. We were blinded to the things of God. And in adolescence, when you are, so when you are born again, amen, you are born of the Spirit. But people can still be carnal even if they're born again. In fact, people can still go back to the flesh if they're born again. But there's an area where we want to be spiritual or with the Spirit in oneness when we are born again. There's a difference. So we have the infant, toddler, adolescent, and adult stages, three stages. Then we have the fleshly, the carnal, and the spiritual stages of humanity. Then there's the area to where there's the past, present, and future that's related to every single one of these areas. Jesus said something profound. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. What connects everything is called truth. Truth. As an infant and toddler stage and so forth, there's nurturing. As an adolescent stage, there's learning. And as an adult stage, there is maturing. And all of these are run parallel to one another. So we got infant, toddler, adolescent, adult. Then you got fleshly, carnal, and spiritual. You have past, present, and future. Then you have nurturing, learning, and maturing. And truth is relative and effective in every area. In every area. In the present stage of time. Amen. 
It is effective in the adolescent stage, in the carnal stage, learning stage. It's always affecting our physical life and spiritual life. It is a constant flow all the time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, Paul exposes their human nature versus their divine nature. 1 Corinthians chapter 3. So we all want to reach the maturing stage. Now, just because you're in a maturing stage doesn't mean you're matured. It never stops. Amen? But we want to reach that maturing stage. We're no longer going back to just the learning stage. Because we're always learning, that's a part of maturing. Because in the learning stage, it's almost like being in the classroom and only learning in the classroom until you bring it out and you begin to practice it. Now you begin to mature it. Because practice makes perfect. Amen? We're going to make mistakes, aren't we? But we're going to learn those from the mistakes and God willing maturing from them things. Hallelujah. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 1, let's speak it. And Paul is, now we got to remember, this is written to believers. And Paul writes them, he says, I, brethren, could not speak to you to spiritual people, but to what? Carnal. Why? Because carnal means you've been born, but you're still living according to the natural humanity. And to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able to. In other words, they're not able to digest it. They're not able to put things into practice yet. They're not able to see things through. They're not able to trust. Because see, maturing is a level of trust in God. They're still about themselves. They're still about their feelings. They're still about what they think, what they see, what they interpret. And miss the whole thing of what God is trying to say. Amen. For you are still carnal. In verse 3. For where there are envy, strife, divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like what? Mere men. Again, I truly believe that the Spirit of the Lord is trying to get us out of the arena of, of acting like mere men and earthlings. And get us to become acting like eternal lights. He said, for when one says, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Paulus, um, are you not carnal? Who then is Paul, and who is Apollos? And who but ministers through whom you believe as the Lord gave to each one? I planted Apollos, watered, but who? God gave the increase. So then neither he who plants is anything nor he who waters, but God who gives the what? Increase. Now, he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are God's fellow workers, you are God's field, and you are God's building. Wow. Again, in this area, Paul was expressing the difference between the divine nature and the carnal nature. Well, look at one of the things he wants us to get into is the area of co-labor. Because only the divine nature will co-labor with God, the creator. The human nature will not. The human nature resists and rejects everything God is trying to do. That's where that battle is within. And until you have dominion over the human nature, you will live a life of up and down and all around, and you will, even if you're born again and speak in tongues and so forth, you will go right back to where you started from. Amen? Titus chapter 3.
You know, it always reminds me of the Good Samaritan. I don't know, you remember the story of the Good Samaritan? Where all the religious dudes walked by the person that was bleeding on the side of the road. <laughs> you, know? But you know why? They didn't do anything because it was the Sabbath. Far be it that we, we didn't obey the law of the Sabbath. Jesus rebuked them because they were angry with him because he healed on the Sabbath. And here are this Samaritan individual walking down the street, seeing someone in need, decides to help them when all the other religious ones, according to the rules, wouldn't help him. It's amazing to me that there's still that religiousness even in the body of Christ. Titus 3. Oh, hallelujah. You know why? Because they've never come out of humanity. God warned us about human precepts. He said you can't advance that way. Glory. Titus chapter 3. Is anybody there yet? Yes. That's good. Let's speak it from verse 1. Remind them to be subject to rulers and authorities and to obey, to be ready for every good work, to speak evil of no one, to be peaceable, gentle, showing all humility to all men. See, he didn't say show humanity. He said humility. <laughs> There's a difference. Some people just can't reach that place. Pride is a, a part of their life, and, the, and that is tormenting. And the Lord says, I reject the proud, but give grace to the humble. So the only way out of escape is to be humble. For we ourselves were also once foolish, disobedient, deceived, serving various lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. But when the kindness and the love of God our Savior toward man appeared, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy he saved us, through the washing and what? Regeneration and the renewing of the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us abundantly through Jesus Christ our Savior, that having been justified by his grace, we should become heirs according to the hope of eternal life. This is a faithful saying, and this, these things I want you to affirm constantly. Everyone say constantly. In other words, it should always be before us, just like the Lord should always be before us. This is a faithful saying, and these things I want you to affirm constantly, that those who have, who have believed in God should be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable to men. But avoid what? Foolish disputes, genealogies, contentions, strivings about the law, for where there are, uh, they are unprofitable and useless. Reject the device of man after the first and second admonition, knowing that such a person is warped and sinning in being what? Self-contender, promoting himself. We are in a time right now, in other words, these three stages of humanity where the Holy Spirit has access to when we are born again. He brings us into a regeneration. We, he brings us to this place of regeneration. Only the Holy Spirit. And in this, it's a constant to those who are willing to cooperate. He will not regenerate someone that's not willing to cooperate. It doesn't work that way. It must take cooperation. Again, even when you are born again by the Spirit of God, there must be a converting of the soul. There must be a crucifying of the flesh. Amen? There must be a severance of the past. There must be a heart set to the future. And there must be truth that balances every area by the Spirit of the living God. So the regeneration of the Holy Spirit is constant to those who are willing to cooperate <laughs> from, earthly, from their earthly creation into the eternal or the divine creation. That's what he's always trying to bring us to, into that new divine creation. It's a battle. No one said it's not a battle. 
Sometimes it's a real struggle. Your worst enemy is you. You don't have to worry about demons and devils, although self invites them in and parties with them. Anger, hatred, murder, loss, all of the other things that are displeasing to God. And John chapter 1. So in the process of regeneration, going through the stages of humanity, entering, leaving humanity into eternity. John chapter 1, verse 10. John 1, 10. Everybody there? Jesus was in the world, and the world was made through him, and the world did not know him. He came to his own, in other words, his own creation, <laughs> and his own did not receive him. But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe or follow in his name who were born not of blood, which is, or nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of what? But of God. And the word became human. That word flesh means human. Jesus became flesh on the cross. Does everybody get it? But he became human before he entered the cross. On the cross, he became flesh. Why? Because he took on the sins of all mankind. That was his only ticket to get into hell. Hell didn't accept the righteous. They accepted the sinner. So Jesus became, the word became human and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory to glory as the, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace, which is God's plan of escape and truth. So again, the creator came into the world of corruption to expose it, to disarm it, and to give new birth to those willing to come out of its bondage, deception, and destruction. Jesus became human, not flesh. Flesh is the offspring of darkness, unsaved. Carnal is born, but allowing the human nature to dictate and rule. You can be born again in the spirit, but if the human nature is still dictating and ruling, we are called carnal. To be considered spiritual is where the divine, eternal nature of the Holy Spirit has rule over the old nature. You know, a lot of people go around, yeah, I'm spiritual. I'm very spiritual. Yes. And they worship crystals. You know, they're, so, they're so spiritual, they read tarot cards. They're still reading their horoscopes. They're still carnal, grumbling and complaining. Perverse mouth, nasty thinking. That's called carnal. Romans 12. Romans chapter 12. Regeneration. Three stages of humanity. We want to get through it and enter eternity. And we want to get into that place where we're no longer carnal anymore. We're in that area of maturing. And verse 1. One and two. Let's speak it. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service or your responsibility. In other words, here's an area he's requiring me and you to be disciplined <clears throat> or to be consistent or to be individuals that are not only seeking the face of Christ, but the presence of Christ, the will of Christ. 
And he says, do not be conformed to this world. In other words, human nature. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Again, regeneration into Christ's image takes a place by redirecting your thought process. You must re... That's your responsibility, is to redirect your thought process. Amen? To redirect your words, your will, your desires, till they begin to parallel with Christ so that you're walking with him. That's our responsibility. In Romans chapter 8, Many people stunt their maturity. Did you ever hear somebody say stunt their growth? You know, there used to be a saying, if you smoke cigarettes, you stunt your growth. I don't know how true that is. Or not, you know. Imagine it stunts everything, you know. Well, you're opening the door to demonic activity anyways. I, it still blows me away that there are Christians that still smoke. It's an accursed item. And it opens the door, and they wonder why they have troubles. Because they're still living carnally. Romans 8, verse 1. And there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who walk according to the, to the flesh. To those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. Come on. Somebody see it? But according to the what? Spirit. Now, in this, he's talking about walking to the carnal. Amen? Because if you're walking to the flesh, well, I guess he could be talking about walking to the flesh. Because if you're walking to the flesh, you're on your way to hell. Somebody see that? Let's read this again. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh. Why? Are they headed on the way to hell? Yes. But according to the Spirit. So those are the individuals that are heading on the way to heaven. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, that is, was weak through the flesh, God did by sending his own Son in likeness of a sinful flesh, on account of sin he condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Now he explains something. He says to be carnally minded, which is a believer who is still allowing the human nature to control them, is what? Death. Also death. So not only is the flesh life death, but the carnal nature is death. Does everybody see that? For to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is what? Amnity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. Paul emphasizes the difference between flesh, carnal, and spirit. The old man is flesh, and it is blinded. Somebody got it? The old man is flesh, and it's blinded. Carnal's old thinking, with the, even though he's got a new man. Old way of thinking. The old man is flesh, it is blinded. The new man, carnally, is still living according to the old man. He's allowing him to control it. Where there's dullness of senses and veils. Because they can't see. Again, flesh is blinded, carnal is veiled. I'm going to say it again. Flesh is blinded, carnal is veiled. And of course, living according to the Spirit is truth thinking of the new way, Christ's way. In fact, when you're living according to the Spirit, you have night vision. You're able to see through darkness. And there's something very important. 
living according to the flesh and carnal, there's something they have in common. Self. Self. That is the thing that they have in common is self. Living according to the spirit, it's denying self. The Holy Spirit regeneration deals with the human stages of transition by trying or by trying to get us and getting the human nature out of the way. He's always dealing with me and you to get the human nature out of the way. So he's trying to get us to the place. The Holy Spirit regeneration deals with the human stages of transition by getting the human nature out of the way, converting the soulless nature. Now you got to remember that the human nature has, says, desires. The soulless nature has emotions. And he's trying to get us into the maturing spiritual nature with the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty called the anointing, until the divine nature and your spirit are one. Are one. Until the divine nature and your spirit is one. There should be a, we, in other words, there's a place where there's a continuous dissolving of human nature. And to the eternal nature. It's constantly dissolving. It's constantly dismantling. Only with your cooperation. No longer earthbound, but heaven bound. <laughs> That's where Paul said we die daily, right? We must die naturally, humanly, carnally, and selfishly to everything. To everything so we can meet the conditions of a new life regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Everything is associated with condition. We must meet that condition every time. Is everybody okay? So you need to ask yourself once in a while, am I meeting the condition? See, judge your fruits before you judge someone else's. Look in the mirror and find out what's going on with you. Like the word says, pull the national grand forest out of your ear before you pull the tree trunk out of somebody else's, right? Romans 8, 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will what? You'll die. But if by the spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as are led by the spirit of God, these are what? These are sons and daughters of God. Wow. So if you're led by the spirit, the stages of dismantling humanism becomes more real and real and real to you. Where you find out that the things that you used to want in this world have been dissolved. And the things that you want in, according to the eternal kingdom is more. There's being in a constant exchange made, constantly. That's where we can become sons and daughters of God. In Colossians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. Verse 1. If then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are what? Above where Christ is sitting at the right hand of God. Set your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. You know, the word tells us and warns us, as a soldier of Christ, do not be entangled in the affairs of this world. Amen. You know, you got to look in the arena because the word tells us about who we fellowship with, those that have a pure heart and clean hands. You know, I always look at individuals. If I was in a military operation, would I trust that person to, to watch my back or be with me? Amen. Does everybody get that? It's the same thing in the kingdom. Amen. What you, who you associate with, you better be able to, to know that they've got your back, that, they're that you can trust them. 
And we look at what happened to Judas. And he sat right before Jesus the whole time. And it says, and the spirit entered him. Satan entered him. And then he betrayed him. That's why associations bring impartations. You know, so many people, so many times people want to get something from God and then go back to their carnal nature. You've got to make a choice that you want a new life. And it's constant, not just one time. It's a new life consistently. You must want it. You don't want to get to that point. You don't want to, I need it. You want it. I have to have it. No, I want it. Because if you're not an individual that wants a new life and willing to do whatever it takes for a new life, you won't hold on to it too long. Verse 3. For you died and your life is where? Hidden with Christ and God. When Jesus, who is our life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desires, covetousness, which is idolatry. Because of these things, the wrath of God is, um, is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to do what? Put off these things. What's the first thing? Anger, anger, wrath. All of this is associated with protectors of self. Blasphemy, malice, filthy language out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you have put off the what? Old man with his deeds and put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised nor uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on what? Tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. But above all these things, put on what? Love which is a bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which also you were called in one body. And be what? Thankful. Remember, don't forget where you came from. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Philippians 3. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen? But you can't get joy without his presence. Does everybody get that? You can't get joy without his presence. So you got to get connected. Philippians chapter 3. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 17. Brother, join in following my example and note those who walk as you have for us a pattern. For many walk of whom I have told you often and now I tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lonely body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to him. Self. Why we're here, let's go to Philippians 4. Verse 4. Glory. Philippians 4, verse 4. Is everybody there? Yes. Rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice. If you can't rejoice, you're a carnal. 
Or you're just stinky fleshy. Rejoice in the Lord when? Always, not when you feel like it. Amen. Well, I just don't feel like rejoicing. Well, then you'll stay miserable. Why? Because your human nature is still running your life. And you know, the human nature promotes corruption. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice, and let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand. Be anxious for everything. I want, I need, I know, no, 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 no. That's called carnal. Does everybody get it? It's called what? Carnal. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not. Come on, say it with me. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall trust. Oh, hallelujah. That's, there it is right there, whether you're carnal or spiritual. Whether you're in the spirit or in the flesh. Amen. You know, when people are carnal or in the flesh, they become runners and cowards. Only those in the spirit are fighters. There's a difference. Let your gentleness be known to all men. The Lord is at hand and be anxious for what? Nothing. But in everything by what? Prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Wow. This is powerful. Think about this. Be anxious for nothing. How are you going to be anxious for nothing? By making connection in prayer. See, what happens when you're carnal or fleshly, anxiousness comes and you try to fix it in the flesh. You try to fix it in your carnal mind. You think carnal in everything. Everything is humanism. Haven't come through the stage yet. Haven't completed the process of conversion. Haven't reached and, or even touched the maturing stage yet. Amen? Still adolescent. Is everybody okay? Verse 8. Finally, my brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, Whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good, report. If there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learned and received and heard and saw in me, these, th these do, and the God of peace will be what? With you. With you. Wow, hallelujah. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that now at last your care for me has flourished again. Though you surely did care, but you lacked opportunity. Praise God. In this area, again, we must begin to look. God is trying to bring us to another level. Bring us deeper. It's going to take dying more. It's going to take digesting more. What God is saying, only through the Holy Spirit can you digest. Listen, when God speaks to you, if the, if, you're not in, if the Holy Spirit's not interpreting what's happening, you'll say, oh, God told me. And it wasn't God at all. How many of y'all know that your emotions can speak louder than God? How about your flesh? Do you ever notice that when you step in a puddle of affliction, every voice from hell comes to you? I mean, man, they just come and beat and beat and beat until you step out of that puddle. You must humble yourself in those circumstances. You stretch out your hand and say, look at somebody pray with me before I kill somebody. Amen. You got to humble yourself. Because the enemy begins to use the individual like a puppet then. Amen? Amen. Let's close it, Mark 10. 
Mark 10. Actually, hold on a second. Let's go to Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Verse 10. Ephesians 6, 10. What's the first word? Finally. Finally. <laughs> Finally. Do this like even. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and not your own. Don't lean on your own understanding because you probably just misinterpreted everything. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be what? Able to stand against the wiles of the devil. Did you put on the whole armor of God there today? If you didn't, you will not be able to resist. Amen. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, and against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Wow. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Yes. That's where the t-shirts the that people wear and say, who told you that? Who told you that? You see, we need to discern those things. Where did it come from? Do you ever get around someone that thinks worse first? Amen. Man, it's worse first. How many times does the devil tell you when you had a, you sneezed, oh, you're getting sick. <laughs> Man, I must have caught it from this person. Oh, but it was that person's fault or whatever. You know what I mean? Or just like the ripple effects. Amen. Or, or you did something and, Instead of it was a sprain, it was a broken, I'll never be able to walk. <laughs> or you have an itch, uh oh, there's more bed bugs. Oh, <laughs> 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 oh hallelujah. <laughs> It's okay. People start talking about it. I start scratching. <laughs> <laughs> but in this, we must get dressed with the full armor of God. Amen. And realizing that this influence is coming from the unseen realm. And if you're not recognizing that, then you're easy prey. Very easy prey. And you're a meal for the powers of darkness. Amen. Now let's close it. Mark 10. <laughs> things can happen at your workplace conflicts whatever it may be or you messed up something you know that's where you have to look at all things are going to work to the good if God is with you amen and and <laughs> and in then don't fret don't, don't worry. Don't get freaky. Put what you've learned to work. Amen? Put what you've learned to work. Work it. If God be for you, who can be against you? And all of these things. Listen, we're going to go through stuff. You've got to go through stuff. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, you've got to go through it. That's why he says, count it all joy when you do go through it. He didn't say you wouldn't go through it or if you'd go through it. He says, you're going through it. You're going to go through it. And it's for perfecting. It's for establishing. It's for settling. All of these things are just button pushers. They're to expose your impurities and expose your enemies. But if you're not looking in that direction because you're still living on a human nature, you're easy prey. Very easy. And the enemy will take you right back in that cycle again and use us all over again. 
when we thought we've overcome it. Mark 10, 23. <clears throat> oh, yes. <laughs> oh, I'm in Matthew. That's why it didn't make sense. Sheesh. Mark 10. Is everybody there now? Amen. Verse 23. Then Jesus looked around and he said to his disciples, how hard is it for those who have riches to enter the kingdom of God? Now listen, this is not just about riches of money. This is about riches of talents and abilities also. Because people rely on themselves. <clears throat> In verse 24, And the disciples were astonished at his words. But Jesus answered again and said to them, Children, how hard is it for those who trust in riches or in themselves to enter the kingdom of God? It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. <laughs> and they were greatly astonished, saying among themselves, Who can then be can get saved? This is crazy. But Jesus looked at them and said, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Then Peter began to say to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Now, was he telling the truth? Yes. They had left all and followed him. Somebody get it. And Jesus answered and said, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels who shall not receive a hundredfold now in this time and houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and in the age to come eternally. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. So you can expect, you know, so many times, and I'm not talking about false expectations, but if you're in divine position, in divine order, things are going to work. No matter what happens, they're going to work to the good. I, I can only, in my own experiences, and I've seen others' lives' experiences, Rescued from prison. Rescued from death. Rescued from financial burdens. Rescued from all kinds of things. Because grace is a plan of escape. Amen? Grace is a plan of escape. And God always has something good and better for us. The more you mature, the more he trusts. The more he trusts, the more he releases. Other than that, he won't release. He won't trust. Again, it's a matter of denying yourself, fighting, picking up the cross, being consistent, and setting and focusing your thoughts on the things above, on the promises of God. That's why he says, feed on his faithfulness. He's faithful to complete what he started if you let him. Amen. Amen? Going through the stages of humanity and leaving them behind. Going through the eternal and the divine nature. Amen. Father, we are honored and blessed for your word today. And Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, mercies, and grace in all areas of carnality and fleshly. Anything that we've touched and agreed with the voice of the stranger and anything that we have thought, spoken, or did that offended you. Again, we ask that you continue to wash us with the blood of the Lamb and heal us through your stripes, filling us, dressing us, and possessing us that we may be sons and daughters well-pleasing to you. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. You may bring...